Well, the place is tidy again. I'm going to test this to make sure it's actually running. Good. I think it would be wise to get a new source of electricity for it. Let's set it up. I bought these and I can't remember what the price was, but it's about 1400 and something, somewhere between 1400 pounds and 1500. Um, the reason I bought them is because I saw a video by Will Proust and I'll put a link in the description below where he did a teardown video. And these are a budget lithium iron phosphate battery. The advantage of lithium iron is that you can use 100% of the power in the battery, whereas lead acid you use 50%. So. I've now doubled my storage capacity by having four of these, even though I have four lead acid batteries, but you can only use 50% of the lead acid batteries power. Basically the reason I got these now at this point is that I'm going to be using a lot of tools like drills intermittently. Um, what I'm noticing with my Honda generator really doesn't like being turned on and off and on and off and on and off. So I'm going to move away from that and hook this up and use this as I'm sure you've seen other brands like EcoFlow and stuff like that who provide battery generator or battery replacement generators kind of thing. Um, I'm just gonna make one and I'll just have a high power version of that. This is where I want to put them permanently. These batteries cannot be charged below zero degrees Celsius. So below freezing, you cannot charge a lithium ion battery. If I'm on the boat, I'm going to put them opposite the fire so inside, while I'm on the boat, they should never go below freezing and thus everything should be fine. The arrangement with the bolts and then the nuts and the washers is to do with two things. Nothing in the boat is square. So 
by having that adjustment I can make things square and the other thing is that I'm keeping the wood away from the steel as best as possible um, wood wet wood against steel will rot the steel as you can see there's quite a big difference these are the same length but that that I welded it to and that that's much higher than that the steel is the support and the wood is what the box is going to be attached to Just got seven screws one two three uh, four one two three four and three across the bottom and that's what's keeping it in place so i need to take it out three screw seven screws out and it comes off um, i packed in loads of insulation in behind it and greased it uh, let's let's put the batteries in This is the breather hose for the black water tank. Loops around and then it goes up to here and then it heads off down to there and then it goes up the wall and it goes out that breather vent there. But we have four tanks so we have a breather hose there. We have a breather hose there. So these two connect go up and over to that vent now I need to connect to that breather hose up to that vent system. I need to just connect up the hose before I fill the tanks. Right, I ordered six of these 
um, I only have two. Uh, these are the ends of the cables that attach to the batteries. So I can't do anything with the electrics until they arrive. So I'm decided I'm just going to solve another issue, which is I'm going to flip the boat again. My bowsprit, which doesn't fit anymore, doesn't have any room, and I was considering let's getting it outside and putting it on the boat, um, but it does require quite a bit of work to put the bowsprit. It's not a priority, but um, in my genius, because I raised the box here, so there's my electrical box covered up at the moment, but because I've raised it, I can just put the bowsprit back where it was, and the whole length of the boat is available if I switch everything back. I mean, how long can it take to put all the stuff back to the way it was? I mean, well, less than 30 seconds. <laughs> I've just made it backwards. So that bit should be the underside, because at the moment... That's what I've made. And it should be the other way round. Well, the weather has suddenly become autumn, so um, it's, it's, it's cooler, which is nice, and much nicer working environment, and it's raining. It took me a week to get these. Let's sort out these batteries. Beautifully balanced. Now I need to disassemble all of that. These are nine-year-old lead-acid batteries and they're basically useless, but they are able to keep LED lights and charge up a few batteries. And what they do is also even out the solar. As you can see, it's bulk charging at the moment. So what we're going to do is shut it all down, disconnect everything, drag it out, and basically rework these so that they fit the lithium ion battery. That's 5,000 watt hours there. So that's a lot of power. And I'm trying to get rid of the petrol generator, or at least just not have to rely on it as much, um, because turning it on and off. And also, it's really annoying for the videos, because you just hear in the background the generator. But by getting an inverter, like this one is 1,500 watts, up to 1700 peak um, so it's a bit lightweight you can get a 5000 watt inverter very cheap on the internet so let's put that in temporarily so 
So, ew, look at the filth on it. Anyway, oh, that's better. So, I have this, and it is set up to do lead acid batteries. So, what you do to change it, and this is the basic, basic way of doing it. The wheel there says dot one dot three dot five dot seven. So the dots are the in between the numbers. And here we have a table. This table is from Victron, and it tells you what all the numbers mean: seven lithium iron phosphate, and it'll do a fourteen point two charge and a thirteen point five float.